Welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. We're talking with Oregon's 5th District Congressman Kurt Schrader. Welcome once again. Thank you. I mentioned health care. Your opponent, uh, yep. Mark Gamba, the Milwaukee mayor, favors universal health care or Medicare for all. He says it would improve access to health care and save millions, he says, while providing better and more accessible health care. Last I read, more than 100 House Democrats support that. I know you're trying to shore up the Affordable Care Act. Yep. Do you ever envision a time when you would support Medicare for all? Uh, I don't see it right now or in the near term. As you well know, the reality of the world is uh, this president's trying to undo the whole concept of universal health care. So to push it into a, a neverland that uh, uh, doesn't resonate with Oregonians and the American people, I think does a disservice to the discussion. We have to show Oregonians that universal health care is real and it can occur right now for you and your family. Uh, and that's what the Affordable Care Act does. And that's what some of the fixes that I've worked on in the last Congress and in this, in this current Congress to shore that up a little bit, make sure people understand the benefits. I've been visiting a lot of the coordinated care organizations here in Oregon, and we have to get the concept across back east that it's not about insurance program, it's about treating the patient itself, making sure the patient's healthy, treating that person holistically. And you know, we've been working at this forever. I did it when I was in the state legislature, uh, acknowledged expert, if you will, uh, in the delegation. I'm on the committee of jurisdiction. I know what I'm talking about, unlike certain other people people from Milwaukee and we have a really clear path to getting some stuff done at this point in time. The drug price stuff I alluded to earlier, we're starting to really make bipartisan progress reducing drug costs. And I think that's huge. We actually had a good bill on surprise billing. Uh, people hate to go to the doctor or hate to go to the hospital, think they're going to their hospital with their insurance plan, only to find out the anesthesiologist or cardiologist is out of network and they get a twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar bill. We are stopping that right now in my committee. It's really nice to see us come together. And we have a graphic that shows a list of a lot of the bills you've co-sponsored, oh, a lot of the bills that you're working on that we'll put up so you can see a lot of these that you already mentioned about um, drug prices and um, stabilizing the Affordable Care Act, the surprise billing. We've done a number of stories on the surprise billing here at KGW. Do you think Great. in this next session that you're going to be able to make some difference? I mean, it feels like the ACA is in limbo. Well, a little bit it is. I mean, elections matter. Uh, the Republicans tried to repeal it. As you remember, in the last Congress, they found out that, whoa, thanks to folks like me, Joe Kennedy, and others on the committee, that, whoa, this does a lot of good. They got, West Virginia got pushback. The delegation got pushback from their constituents saying, hey, wait a minute, we now have health care. We never had health care before. So it's a little bit of a learning curve. I think the Republicans understand we need to fix that. And I've had several of them talk publicly in the committee about disagreeing with Trump's direction. Uh, unfortunately, this president is, uh, you know, more uh, politically oriented than he is in solutions. And that's that's a problem. We need to get this done now. Uh, we'll have another election in a year and a half. Talking about problems, one of the nuisances of modern day life are these annoying robo calls that can yeah. be harassing, predatory, for uh, especially for seniors. You're co-sponsoring legislation. I had two today. <laughs> you had two. I, I get them all the time. Um, you have legislation that you've sponsored that uh, originated in your committee to help curb robo calls. Right. What would it do? Well, I think it's important for folks to remember robo calls are currently illegal. Uh, the problem is with modern technology, we have calls coming in from around the world. There's always a way, unfortunately, seemingly to circumvent the system. So what we've done is given the FCC some authority and opportunities uh, to go after these people in a bigger way, larger penalties, uh, do more screening, force a lot of the pr providers to actually do some screening with their technology to keep these calls from coming through in the first place. Uh, some cutting edge stuff to minimize and hopefully stop a whole, well, a whole bunch of these horrible calls that no one likes. I know a lot of people are rooting for you in yeah, that area. That's universally bipartisan. <laughs> it is. <laughs> let's talk about, let's look ahead to the 2020 election. Uh, what do you think about the Democratic debates so far? Do you have any candidates that you like, people who you think are sort of standing out? Well, there's only one candidate that can beat Donald Trump. And I think uh, if that candidate doesn't materialize at the end, uh, Democrats uh, will lose and we'll have uh, President Donald Trump for another uh, another four years. It's a critical election. A lot of folks like him in my district. That's fine. Uh, I'm not a big fan. Uh, the level of discourse, the way he describes things, uh, I find it embarrassing, frankly, uh, no matter if, whether you agree or disagree with his policies. Uh, we need a president that can bring us together, uh, get working men and women back into, uh, uh, into the Democratic fold if Democrats are going to win. Well, you said that there's only one person mm -hmm. that can beat Donald Trump. Who is that person? That's Joe Biden. 
There's Joe Biden. Maybe some of the governors from some of the other states, but Colorado looks like Hickenlooper is bowing out, obviously. Uh, Bullock's still in. Uh, but we need someone that has a relationship with working men and women. That's why Democrats lost the last election. Wasn't because we didn't get out enough women or minorities or kids. Uh, we did really, really well in that area. You talk to Stacey Abrams in, in Georgia. We did pretty darn well. But where we lost the election, was in states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, where working men and women say, you know, we're in, they're, they're good people. They, they believe in everyone having the same opportunity, no matter who you are, what your ethnicity or race. But they also want to know, what are you doing for me? You know, talk about something I care about. Talk about, you know, jobs. Talk about the education stuff. Talk about career technical education. That's the stuff I talk about because I know that's what people want to talk about. That, that affects them and their children and their, their daily life. Democrats haven't done that in the last two and a half, three years. If they don't do it soon, we're going to be in trouble. So if Joe Biden emerges as the nominee, who would you pair him up with with his running? Oh, right? that I, that's a good question. I, I probably don't have a great answer. That's where I would look to the debates to help you know, filter out who's the person. Do you have a second choice, second tier? Uh, not really. Not really at this point in time. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the rest of the debates. It's so early yet, you know, we have to thin it down a little bit so there's a little more substantive discussion. That'll hopefully happen in the next six months. We talked, uh, we only have about a minute left, but we talked about evolution of people's ideas evolving. And I, I know you've sat here before and we talked about Nancy Pelosi and yeah. you had opposed her being the House Speaker uh, fairly publicly, but you've changed your mind on that. Uh, why? Well, I've been, it shows you what a crazy uh, inverted world we live in these days. Uh, I think she's done a decent job uh, uh, trying to bridge the differences in our very diverse Democratic caucus. Uh, uh, moderate members like myself that represent these purple districts that I think uh, understand the heartbeat of America have had an outsized influence, frankly, in legislation. We were critical in our election bill, making sure taxpayers didn't have to foot the tab there. Uh, we went along with the universal background checks for the very reasons we talked about and kept all the divisive stuff out of that so we could move the ball forward. The humanitarian aid package, that was problem solvers and us getting the job done. Congressman Schrader, thank you, as always, for being here on Straight Talk. I appreciate your being here. Thanks. And I hope you'll join me next week when my guest is Congressman Schrader's one of his Democratic opponents, Milwaukee Mayor, that we were talking about earlier. Mark Gamble will be here, so join us then. Have a great week. We'll see you next week for Straight Talk.